everybody, welcome back to the video. It is April 4th, 2019, and I'm joined with Dan, Steve, and Nick, and we're going to talk about video games. Really? We are. I think that's, that's what, what we, we do over here. Oh, huh. all right. Um, I think we're going to start with the games we've been playing and move into the topic, which is... Uh, games we're looking forward to in 2019. So I would say Nick goes first, because the other three of us have the same two games. <laughs> we're going to be kind of boring. Well, maybe not boring, but I, I think I've kind of been playing the same stuff I was the last time. Um, I've been just kind of pecking away at Zelda um, Breath of the Wild. Um, I've gotten a little bit further in the messenger. I think I'm. What did I just beat? I just beat the the dragon. And so, so you uh, switched to sixteen bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think because you when you run you usually go through the eight bit part, right? Right. I stop at the end of that tower. Yeah. So like on a couple of the fights in that part, I like used your runs as help for some of the bosses like for uh the queen and the the big golem thing at the end spoilers i guess um but the dragon i i did fight him quite a few times uh i would get to the his like last phase and it would always get me um because i was kind of bad at doing the hops when there's no floor so um but that it's just a fun game. Um, and then I've also been playing um, Fantasy Star 4. And that has gone pretty good. Um, probably put a couple hours into it. And uh, I think I kind of started to like get into the meat of the story. Um, and I have been playing that... I've played it a lot on the Steam Link app on, um, like, an old tab Android tablet I have, just streaming it from my computer, which is kind of cool and, like, works surprisingly well. Like, I even was at Steve's house one day and was streaming from my home computer, like, through the internet into Steve's house onto this, like, crappy little tablet that's, like, probably six years old. It was working pretty well. I feel like that is on the very fringe of being outside the spirit of video games. <laughs> like stream <laughs> streaming as a technology is getting away from games. Streaming from a like to a tablet, emulating a game from days gone. Like, but I still yeah I was still playing it with like a, a connected Steam controller, so I was like just using it as a little TV. And I kind of just wanted to see how it would work because they just re they just uh, came out with the technology to do that for like the Steam Link app. I think that's part of like the beta release or something. It's like not official yet. You're preparing yourself for the Stadia. You're getting yourself comfortable with streaming your games forever. It was cool. Um, it was a little choppy. Um, I tried running like um uh, what was it? skyrim through it and it was like pretty grainy and choppy and so it was it'd be hard to play a game like that but with like a turn-based you know old rpg it was totally fine i don't know how much you've been doing it but uh i mean you've seen it when you've been over here before my steam link which is just going from my TV to the PC that's right next to it, even though it is going through wireless, um, like will randomly slow down real bad and get like really bad artifacting. And in most cases, like either slow down to like five frames per second or freeze up or get really fuzzy. Does yours ever do that too? Like, is that a Steam Link problem or is that just something about the way Steam Link is talking to my network, you think? Did you say you'd have it running wireless or wired 
I think wireless. It was wired at one point, but I don't know that it's wired anymore. If, if it's wired, I'd be really surprised that that happens. I mean, if it's wired, then it must be uh, something on like the hardware end of my PC that's causing that, I think. Your PC might not be able to handle the streaming, but I would find that very odd since you no. just zombied it, together. So. When it does that, like when it freezes or slows way down, I can just look over at my PC monitor and keep playing the game fine. So it's not like a oh, performance thing. In it's the game. just the projecting it to the TV. Yeah, I had problems with that too. I mean, you've seen my setup. My TV's literally right next to it. Yep. And uh, I actually have the Steam Link like little box yeah me so too I plug yeah. it into the network yeah and uh stream through the big tv like that i think i was playing icy and uh <clears throat> the response time on the tv was poor compared to the monitor that i was also sitting right in front of so i'm not really sure what's going on with that yeah I, yeah i'm not sure and i don't have too much of a um like a low tolerance for input lag like in rhythm games it bothers me but in most other games it doesn't really bother me um but this is not like from at least in my setup it's not an input lag thing it's right. it's definitely like a uh just either a, sp a spike in network down. performance or hardware performance where something obviously just like out of nowhere starts chugging or drops to like 240p yeah you might have a bad cable or a router yeah. your router might be dying or yeah who knows but <laughs> yeah I, the technology the is might, cool. Yeah. The router might not be like prioritizing traffic correctly or something too, something weird like that. Yeah. It would right. be kind of hard to optimize. And I mean, it's in my house. So like I'm doing that also while almost always Leah is streaming something on the iPad. You're probably right. in my basement <laughs> streaming another game from a different steam link over my network. Like I don't ever consider the number of devices. So that could be something too. But yeah. Ah, oh, anything else you're playing, Nick? Hmm, I think that's just about it. I haven't, like, started anything new or anything. I've just been working on um, those titles. I did pick up two new games during video game shopping that I'm excited to play. I got... Um, the Last of Us Remastered and Titanfall 2 for pretty cheap. Very nice. So. Oh, so good. Titanfall 2 is so good. If you want to play Titanfall 2, you just let me know and I'll play it with you. <laughs> <clears throat> what about Apex? I'm still going to play Apex. I what was like Apex a more a fun game? Alright, I think we should move on to um, the first game that we've most of us have been playing and i'm gonna say that is baba is you ah, i love that game i do too it's so good i so cute i am so stupid <laughs> no we're all stupid i refuse if someone was on this call and they said baba is you so easy i'm so good at baba is you i would be like get out of here like <laughs> There's no world where you can be smart enough for that game. I am perpetually stuck at all times. So there's a level, and I just sat there. I think it was last night. I just sat there and looked at the screen for like 20 minutes, and I got no answers. <laughs> and then I moved a bunch of stuff, and nothing happened. I took a picture. I brought it in with me to work today. I looked at the picture, and I still formulated nothing. Which, uh, which level was it? Uh, it's in, I think, th World 3, and it's got the river and the cog, and the cog is melt, melt and push. And there's three skulls it have in the top left. Skulls? Oh, I know exactly. I, I actually know the solution for that. Don't tell me. I hate <laughs> I myself. I will not, but I, I, I do know the answer. That's where I'm stuck. <laughs> I suppose... Uh... It's probably worth for anyone that has not seen this game explaining what it is. So it's kind of an abstract game to describe, but it's a puzzle game. It's on a grid and you can push words around and all of the words define the rules of that particular map. So it will say 
Baba is you, so you control the character named Baba. There'll be other words in tiles on the map that will say wall is stop, so you can't walk through a wall. Or rock is push, so you can push rocks when you walk into them. And you can push those words around to make new sentences or just undo the sentences that exist. So you could switch it so it says, rather than wall is stop and rock is push, you can switch it so it's wall is push. And so now you can push the walls where you weren't before. Or you could push wall in place of Baba. And so now it's wall is you and you can control all the walls in the level. That's a fun one when that happens. I know. (laughs) And so you have to push around these blocks in all these different combinations to win the level. And the the victory condition traditionally is getting to a flag, but the victory condition is defined on the map too. So it'll say flag is win. And in some cases, you just need to swap that to wall and then walk into a wall because wall is win. But it very quickly starts getting very complicated with like, other the precise order of yeah it, the way you push the words or you have to do like you have to start crisscrossing the sentences or creating sentences with multiple words in them or doing things in a very particular order you start having to control more than one character at a time and like you need to start like turning objects into other objects it there's so many levels of complexity to the game and every single level is like impossibly difficult and is such a triumph when you actually manage to get through it. <laughs> I yeah, it's have, a lot of fun. Have you guys gotten well, I don't know if this is spoilers for you, Noah. Are you are you against Baba is you spoilers if they're not puzzle solutions? Wait, what happened now? Do you want are you concerned about spoilers if they're not puzzle solutions? I mean, the game doesn't really have a story. I mean, uh, we, you're de- just be describing like the world. Yeah, here well, the, the types of words you come across. Hold oh. on, repeat a bunch of that stuff you just said because my headset got <laughs> unplugged. <laughs> I was asking you if you, because of anyone, I think you would. If you have concerns about word spoilers, like, are you concerned about being spoiled on what types of words are coming up that you may or may not have already seen? Uh, no, because you can, like, as soon as you get three flowers, I think it gives you the end level, and there's a bunch of words in there that I don't know, which I assume I have to learn. Okay. See, I mean, you start getting to levels that have float, where you can, like, lift objects and words off the ground. You start getting to levels that have teleport, or tele, so you can teleport between two similar tiles, like... It, it starts getting so, and you can like push words through the teleport it gets so complicated there's I, okay i'm stuck so, on like eight puzzles right now and i can't solve any of them i have gone past the one i'm stuck on too and I've, i'm in like world four or five or something with the leaves and there's one where the middle is separated by a bunch of foliage or whatever and there's two boulders and they're telly at the beginning yep and I'm pretty sure you have to move the words into the leaves and then like somehow teleport them to make a sentence, but it's so <laughs> confusing, man. I am stuck on that exact same puzzle. <laughs> like I cannot figure that one out. And and I, I've been trying like do I have to like use all the words to create a sentence that like pushes the rock through? And it's like I can't push the words through the teleport rocks because then as soon as I push the is or the telly through i can't create the rest of the sentence like oh my god i cannot figure that out at all i love baba is you but i am no good at it (laughs) it it is amazing it 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 is the sekiro of puzzle games so like i really like when it gives you one where you're like oh i got this one is so easy and like it's over in 10 seconds because you're not stupid and then the next level is just an even more difficult form of that. And you are stuck on it for an immediate yeah, 40 like, minutes. They slowly evolve or they add that one extra element that makes it <clears throat> more confusing because there's just so so many layers at that point where it's like, oh, you know, like when they first added, started adding the float word where they're like, Ah, now now this stuff floats, and you have to try and do things a different way so that you can 
get to where you need to go. Yeah, and like sometimes they don't even change the levels that much. Like sometimes it's just a matter of adding like one, one more rule. or or all the same rules, but just like on different spots of the map. And, yeah, so like you can't get to them. Yep, and so it just creates a drastically different puzzle out of nowhere and makes you feel like you're not a very smart person. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that has been my kind of mm, hour a night type game, like plug in a little bit each day. And I'm not as far as I'd like to be in yeah. that as you. I play it usually before bed for half hour to an hour. It, well, it's and it's a bad game to play when you're tired too, because you need your brain firing on all cylinders. So I have to be like, okay, am I awake enough to play? Am I free of distractions? How's my attention span feeling right now? What's my mood? Like, the, I need to have all these pieces in place to be at my best, Baba. I don't have that. I feel like I'm tired. I'll figure it out with like stupid sleepy brain. It's no way to live. Is that all we got on the Baba is you front? I think so, at least for now, till we all get a little farther in it. I'm you guys are farther than I am right now because I've been uh, sidetracked. Like, yep, I'm good on Baba. Go play; it's good. All right. So, is Sekiro bad? Is my question. No. Uh. No. But my opinion is that it's the worst FromSoft game of the modern era. Interesting opinion. It is It is worse than every Souls game, and it is worse than Bloodborne, in my opinion. I like it, and then I absolutely hate it. Like, like some sort of bipolar situation where like I go from hot to cold in like a flash. Tell me... What causes that? Walk me through the situation. I, I'm i not 100% sure, but like, the getting back to bosses thing is so tedious, and it's and the fight is over in like seconds. I, I, ugh. Yes. I think it depends on the boss, because uh, a lot of them have uh, points like right in front of them. I guess, but it seems like the one of the times where I absolutely just stopped for days was right before Seven Spears or whatever, where I would have to climb all the way around to get that sneak attack or whatever, and then he oh, killed me. Oh, you're, and then you're talking about like back. the mini boss. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant like the major bosses. Um... I think that the boss run-ups are one of the problems that game has. And it feels, to me, more frustrating in Sekiro than it ever did in Dark Souls. Because there were situations sometimes in Dark Souls where you'd have to do a little bit of a run from a bonfire to a boss. I feel like in later Dark Souls games, they started getting a little more gentle about that. But um, part of what makes it so annoying in Sekiro is that you have to, in many cases stealth kill clear the area around the boss uh because if you get into combat you'll probably take a hit or two which will eat up more health than you're willing to part with and so you have to stealth around and kill all these guys which takes a bunch of time and then if you make any mistakes you have to like run far away and just sit there and wait for all of them to reset and it can make getting one legitimate attempt at a boss take like up to like five minutes which is so frustrating when if you mess up like one combo the boss has you're instantly dead yeah um seven spears is specifically where i had that issue the most i would say seven spears i i got the like i you're talking he's in the reservoir yeah yeah so uh, for him, I actually had, didn't have any trouble with him because of the Mekiro or whatever counter move. Uh, like, so I got the sneak attack on him, like you're talking about, where you had to do the death blow, clear all the guys out, yada yada, 
um, and then go behind him to sneak attack him. Uh, but then I fortunately didn't have any trouble with him. But the lady with the gun in the poison swamp was uh, a big problem for me. I have never fought her. I ended up cheesing her, and I won't tell you how, but uh, if you get to her and have also have trouble, I will let you know. If you, Steve, you beat it, right? That's what Tyler was saying? Yep, I just beat it the other night. Okay. I, I believe Noah and I are both at the same point now. We both went through the temple, and we now are going through the sunken valley. Yes... Uh... What what like major bosses have you fought? Like for for the purposes of discussion, what bosses have given you trophies? Sure. Uh the I, I refer to them as major bosses. Uh are horse guy, guy on top of the castle, uh the one in the dream or the past or whatever. Um and then the the monkeys in the Okay. So I have plus five attack right now. Or no, is, that, is that the same for you? Yeah, we're in the same area. I ended up doing the monkeys way later. Um, I'm glad I, I did them first because they were so easy. It's it's basically a free attack upgrade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I had, but I didn't. I did them way later. Um. So I... Like, you can call me a baby... And you can call me a whiner or whatever. You can tell me to get good. But I honestly think that Sekiro is too hard to be, like, super fun. Like, it pushes me, like, a little bit past the line of determined into frustrated more often or too quickly for me to enjoy it as much as the other Souls games. Like you have to against the bosses in particular you have to play so perfectly there's so little tolerance for mistakes that it, it, it takes you so many failed attempts to like learn all the bosses moves and patterns and be good at spotting them that by the time you it get it for me I, I don't really get much satisfaction out of it you know like some of them i do and then other ones i don't yeah like for example for me the guy on the horse took me uh, I don't know, like 10 or so tries till I finally figured that one out. Um, Lady Butterfly took me two. And then Castle Guy took uh, a day and a half. Yeah, it's, it's, that's crazy. And and Monkeys was one, one try. But the next Monkey, I'm not so sure about. <laughs> that one... I'm I'm about to start fighting him. Like I have I saved and quit at the idol right above him. And I gave gave the lady there the rice and she's like, You must puppet the monkey to get the th-. and I don't know what she meant. Yeah, what she's telling you about isn't for a while. It has nothing to do with that that monkey that you're about to fight. Well, I was looking around because, you know, there's lots of monkeys in that area. And yeah. uh I tried using the puppet ninjutsu on a few different guys and it didn't really do anything like i used it on the other one up in the by the temple with the kite but the one in the valley i haven't figured out yet you'll know when you get to it it's pretty obvious you go through like a bunch of area and then you get to a monkey that seems really out of place and you'll be like oh okay oh is it past the boss (laughs) it shouldn't it shouldn't be because no it's not past the boss it's just it's just way farther down into that valley. Is it on the little island? Because I went into that valley, and maybe I killed him on accident? But... No, it's near that little island. There's a cave, and you have to go through the cave. Oh, okay. Where the shop guy is? Yeah. Yep, right okay. next to him. I didn't go through there because he's like, ah, that's the way to the snake. I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, no. If you once you go through that cave, that's where you find it. But oh, okay. Um. Yeah, I have a lot of conflicting feelings on Sekiro. I think that the stealth is really fun, and well done. Uh, the sneaking is cool. I 
like the bosses that didn't take me for like i like the idea of the combat being more aggressive and being parry based it's just i just think it's too strict yeah i would agree with that to some extent like the bosses do feel extremely punishing uh but uh there's also like a lot of things that can make them easier if you know what to do like once i got i once i got good and started parrying on castle guy it turned the entire fight around and his third like the 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 final part of his fight uh I, I used the thing they told me about, after, like, that's on the wall scroll or whatever, mm -hmm. the, the lightning counter, um, and it trivialized his final phase. Like, it only took me three tries on the final phase, I think. Yeah, I mean, that move is really strong. The, what I don't like, though, is that they're, they're, it feel, they're, sometimes they're inconsistent about the hints they give you. Like, in that guy, they just come out right out and give you a big pop-up, and they say, hey, go do this move. This is the move to use. But it's and also, then, it would have been easy to miss that, too, if you weren't looking. Like, if you just mm -hmm. ran past that thing. Or if you took the other route to get up there, you know, like through the hall and up, up through the tower or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And and there are other bosses where you can eavesdrop and learn a little bit of information, like oh the boss is weak to this, like weak yeah, to fire, fire or whatever. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are some bosses where you just don't, you just don't know it. Like there's yeah. a couple of bosses like, that uh, I read about after the fact where it's like oh this item is really effective against them, and yeah, it's like there's you can like reapply knowledge from other bosses to new ones too because they a lot of them have the same types. I guess, like, you know, the ghosts uh, are all weak to the confetti. And the there's the one, like, if anybody jumps in the air, just use the anti-air counter thing, and it doesn't matter what health they're at. You'll just break them instantly. Mm. I, I've used that on a couple different guys. The ones that I haven't been able to deal with so far are the ghosts, like the, the headless guys. I haven't figured out how to deal with I, I came back way late in the game and finished them up once I had a lot more posture and a lot more attack. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of doing too, because they seemed like bosses that are supposed to be done. They're just annoying because they're there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just... like I give the game a solid like a 7 to an 8. I I left a little disappointed in it, I guess, but I also still enjoyed it. Like I don't want to make it sound like I hate the game. Right. It just kind of bummed me out a little. No, well, I mean they had to try something new. They couldn't just do another Dark Souls. Yeah, and I don't blame them for for doing this, but I do think that I... <laughs> Like, the contrast between sneaking around and stealthing and bosses, like, the difference in difficulty is so harsh. You get, like, whiplash. Like, you you play and you're having all this fun sneaking around. Maybe you make a couple of mistakes, but mostly you're doing okay. And then you hit a boss and it's just a wall. I think... And, and you're stuck maybe, there forever. Maybe it's just me, but because of all the stealthing around, I didn't really practice combat, like, parrying or mm -hmm. anything like that. And I just kind of did that for the entire time so i was trying to i relied too heavily on dodge for a lot of stuff and once i learned on that boss that really taught me oh you have to parry then things were drastically different like there's uh the mini boss the 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 giraffe mini boss i'm sure you know who i'm talking about mm -hmm. uh parrying him he just kills himself like if you, you just parry him so yeah it would be like listening. Tyler told me he's like, "Oh, I had to do this, and I had to kite him around, and I got an ambush on him, and then I shot him with fire and did this and that." I'm like, "Oh, well, that sounds way more complicated than it needed to be." <laughs> yeah, I just tapped L1, and then he'd rush at me, and I'd jump on his <laughs> yep. head. Exactly. They teach you not to pl like so. They teach you not to play it like a Souls game like that. They're like, "Hey, you gotta." It honestly, it feels closer to Bloodborne than it does to a Dark Souls game oh, because oh, you have right. to be really aggressive. And, but then sometimes they just throw a random boss at you 
where none of that works and you have to play it like a souls game and so uh like the monkey you guys are on is a good example or um i thought that the ogre was an example of that too where it's like parrying isn't effective because you've got so many grab moves that i need to keep my distance and roll away a whole bunch and like take little pot shots and so now i'm playing it like a souls game which you have Mm -hmm. taught me not to do yeah, the I think the grabs are probably the thing I have the most uh, beef with. I wish there was just a way to tech like counter them in the same way you can right. thrusts. Right. Yeah. Like maybe it's an upgrade you have to buy. Like it would be mm-hmm. nice because like some of them are glitchy too. Like the the ogre was definitely one of them where like he did the lunging count uh, grab and. There's just nothing you can do if you're standing close to him. You're just grabbed. And then one time he threw me off the cliff <laughs> after he did that one. But uh, I, I couldn't figure out an effective way to deal with that other than just like hit him a couple times. But the ogre, if you douse him with oil and light him on fire, he'll die instantly. So yep. that's his it, weakness. It, and if But if you don't, or if you don't have fire at that point i don't remember if you can uh, i think you You, cannot have that tool yet well yeah if you just go straight to the ogre but if you it's like right inside of the the memory area so yeah but you need to have gone away from that area and then gone back like you might get that item go through just the outskirts area and you get up to the ogre and you don't have that tool yet and so now you are fighting this like really hard boss with really strict attacks that do over half your health that you're supposed to fight different from how you fought only the one other boss you fought. So it's just like, yeah, what do you want me to yeah. do? Man? I mean, the eavesdrop guys tell you, Oh, he's, he doesn't like fire. So, I mean, that's your cue to find something like fire to use against him. Yeah. But I mean, there's just no way to know that there is a fire prosthetic unless you already knew, you know, like, I mean, I didn't know, uh, I guess, but, I found it. Before did you go I looking for it, or did you get frustrated and then go to the other area? Um, I only fought him like once, and because he did so much damage, I'm like, well, I'm probably not supposed to do this, so I'm gonna go somewhere else. And then I just immediately left, and I ended up finding the the fire. Hmm. Yeah, and that makes a big difference on him. I I think that they do an awesome job. Like it's got the the from vibe where it's got a really interesting world and like the character interactions. The, the quests, are really yeah. Cool. I've definitely screwed up a couple already. Yeah, me too. I don't know. I don't oh, know like, all, what even all of them are. There's actually a surprisingly large amount of NPCs. Yeah. Like the, for me, my example is the, the guy when you're going through the dungeon and he's like, Oh, I hear the bells. I hear the bells. Uh, Oh, well, I went, down to the village and i killed the ghost lady with the the uh loot or whatever it is and uh i went back to him because i'm like because the other guy in the dungeon wanted somebody for his experiments and then he's like oh, i can't hear the bells anymore you took him away and then i had to kill him oh weird yeah that didn't happen to me yeah, it's the order of how you do things. Like, you're supposed to talk to the ghost lady. I looked it up later. You talk to the ghost lady twice and say say nothing to her for the entire conversation and then leave. And then he moves to there. And then you kill her. And then you talk. So, that's where I screwed up, apparently. How was I supposed to know that? You know? Welcome <laughs> to Souls Quest lines, I guess. Yep. Uh, but, Dan, it's not a Souls game. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Bloodborne did the same thing. It's hard to not think of it as a Souls game too when it has like the exact same UI as yeah, Bloodborne. It's a from software game. Like it looks very similar. Mm-hmm. Like the title screen is exactly the same. It's just the title of the game and it's black with start. Yep. Like you can't trick me. I know that idols are just bonfires <laughs> slash lanterns. I've been and down and, this and road the gourd before. is just the the uh, the flat Estes flask. It's just green now instead of gold. Yep. It also feels a little more useless in this game because, like, 
you don't usually have a lot of time to drink and enemies can take you down so fast. Yeah, I mean, I've got nine uses of it right now. And I definitely go through them pretty quick sometimes. <laughs> yep. It's easy to burn through them. Oh, Noah, are you going to finish Sekiro? Do you enjoy Sekiro, or do you stand by it being a bad game? I, when you said you gave it a 7 or an 8, I was like, I would give it a 6 to a 7. Yeah, I think... You brought That's up pro- like a lot of fair. good points. I I was expecting to come in here and you go you guys all saying like, "Oh man, it's a really good game. There's barely any problems at all." But like, man, there are issues where like uh Lone Shadow Long Swordsman or whatever where I didn't feel yeah. he's he's in the well. Um I didn't feel like I was fighting that boss. I felt like I was fighting my own camera. Yeah. Yes. And sure. oh my god, dude, heaven forbid you accidentally unlock on a target, like you accidentally disable your lock on, the camera just like flies off into nowhere. Like you realize that lock on is the only way to look at an enemy cuz the camera otherwise is is just awful. Yeah, and getting back to lock on is it can be complicated. <laughs> just spam the lock on button and hope they walk into your range. That's pretty much what I did. <laughs> Yep. I definitely, if something like that happened to me on that fight, I just sprinted away from him and left the thing and reset the. Also, one thing that you guys I don't think have gotten to yet, but starts to get really obnoxious, is in the later areas in the game, there start being more enemies that have that can give you the um, that like have stackable status effects that are just one hit kills. Oh, so like if you terror. let them build up too much of that status on you you just die and there's it's, more than one of those curse. yeah and so it's just like did you ugh. buy the curse gourd well i mean you can buy the thing that takes it away and increases your resistance or you can eat the items too but yeah. if there's like two enemies that you don't that you accidentally ran into that you didn't notice or just were fighting someone else and didn't see him walk up behind you they can completely fill your status faster than you even realize and then it's just like pfft, dead yeah i watched dave die to those guys a couple times in uh the late area where he was the design of the late area is really cool but those guys were so annoying i'm also the kind of guy that i'm gonna save those items until i feel like i really need them and then i'll clear it without needing them and i'll feel bad well, that's yeah, where the gourd yeah. comes in handy because it's refillable. Oh, uh, yeah. Once you get to the later areas in the game, I would say feel free to use them. Like, Yeah, the only thing that's overly limited, I'd say, at the beginning is the confetti, uh, which apparently is resolved later in the game. Yeah, later on you can buy it. Um, yeah, it's... It's the only Souls game. Like, it, when I think back to when we were playing, like, Dark Souls 3 or Dark Souls 2, like, I beat those games and then I was like, oh man, I'm going to go fight all the other bosses I didn't fight. I want to make sure I've explored everything. So much fun. And in Sekiro, I, there, I know there are, like, bosses I haven't fought. And, like, there's the one boss that is supposed to the be the great kind demon. Of the, yeah, the demon guy that's, like, the hardest boss in the game. I don't even want to fight him. <laughs> and and he's another example where he has like a flame arm. So if you parry him, you still take a big chunk of damage from the fire. And so it's like, I can't even parry you because I still take damage while I'm parrying. So yeah, yeah. It Sekiro is the first game where I've ever like been very aware. This game is too hard for me to fully enjoy. Like this game is one notch past my comfort level of difficulty. Yeah, I was getting frustrated for a while, and then I I took a break on Castle Boy, and uh, I watched Dave play it for a while, and watching him also kind of gave me insight on, like, oh, this is what I'm doing wrong, and I started to try to adapt um, using his strategy, or strategies, I guess, that I was watching, and uh, it definitely helped, which, again, was mostly parry, you loser. <laughs> so yeah. and like it's still it's 
it's still a fun game in in the parts that are fun it's got very high highs yeah and like there's a chance it'll even still make it into my top 10 of the year but it was not everything i hoped it would be sure i'm glad you said some negative things about a game it makes me happy inside <laughs> see i i can do it i can be critical anything else about sekiro play it for yourself because maybe you'll yeah. just naturally be better at this type of game than me and have a different experience very true all right you guys want to talk about games you're looking forward to oh well, i have two other games that i've been putzing around i forgot to mention them when we talked about it so i'll just lightly touch on them um the first one uh that i played and finished the story mode uh, was the Fate Extella Link, which is the their Muso series. Uh, I never finished the first one. I just ended up reading a synopsis of the story, so I was caught up. But uh, overall, it's a Muso game, I guess. <laughs> but the story was actually kind of interesting, and they added a ton of new characters to this one that weren't in the old one, uh, some of which our characters I like. So that made it a little more enjoyable. Some of them handle a lot worse than others in the actual combat, but overall I'd say it's pretty pretty solid game. Uh and then the other one uh not as exciting cuz it's one of the mobile games, Final Fantasy, but uh I'm hyped because the long awaited Xenogears banner finally dropped this week and uh I managed to pull Ellie, uh, Faye, and Bart, all three of them, uh, and I got enough copies of Ellie to unlock her and make her basically the most powerful unit I have, and I just one-shot a bunch of challenge bosses. Noah, you might remember some of them from the uh, the chamber where you fight the hard bosses. I don't remember any of them. Oh, well... I went in there, they have like 90 million HP, and she killed them in <laughs> I'll put, put it out there. So, kind of ridiculous, but I was excited about that. But that's all I had on my plate, outside of those other two games. Right. Nice. Uh, Steve, you want to start with your list, and I'll add and subtract y- yes. as we go? So I broke mine out by month. And are we going through the entire rest of the year or just through like summer? I think or... we're going for the year. Well, it depends on what you're interested in, I guess. Because me, I have like four games, honestly. Because there's a ton of remakes and re-releases coming out on the Switch. And I'm not super pumped for any of that, uh, really. But there's like a couple new games that are coming out that I'm excited yeah and i have a list of probably 10 to 15 but not all of them i have a ton to talk about so um i can go down my list do you want me to go all the way through it or do you want to go around robin uh we can go around robin that sounds cool okay uh so i in april the biggest game that i'm looking forward to is Super Meat Boy Forever. And I hope it's still coming out in April. I think it still is. I haven't heard anything otherwise. But yeah, it's the sequel to Super Meat Boy, obviously, which is a game that I was super, super into. And this one is an endless runner. or And I think the levels in some cases or all cases might be randomly generated. But it is Team Meat finally making a follow-up to Super Meat Boy. So... I am very excited for that game. Yay, me too. I'm going to have to delete that off my list. Get it out of there. <laughs> are yours sorted by date at all, or are they just all over? They're, I think they're like chronologically from here on, so it gets later and later. I think? I, I don't really know. <laughs> all right, well, why don't you go ahead and give me one that you're looking forward to and tell me why. Uh, I don't really have a good reason. I didn't really look up much about this game, but In the Valley of Gods? 
Yeah. Yeah, it's That's made by the too. guys who made Firewatch, Campo Santo, I think. Yep. And I'm just excited because I liked Firewatch a lot. Yeah, it it uh it's basically Firewatch if it was in Egypt. So or at least that's what it seems. It seems like it's like Egyptian temples or Aztec type temples or something. So that um hopefully that is just like an improved version of Firewatch. I really like Firewatch a lot. Um Campo Santo is a cool studio. Some of the guys from Campo Santo used to have a podcast that I listened to, but they haven't updated in like a year. So I uh, hope the, I hope the Idle Thumbs podcast comes back. Uh, Nick, do you have any games you're looking forward to this year? Hey, I'm still here. <laughs> That's what um, you get yeah. for not playing Sekiro. Or Baba is you. <laughs> but then Baba is true. <laughs> I did watch you play a grip of both of those. But, um, yeah, I've got... There are like a bunch of remakes or re-releases that I'm excited for just because I never played the them when they originally came out or it's been a long time. Um, but one of them for me is going to be um, the Resident Evil remake because I've A, never played Resident Evil and B, that was one of my picks for our list, for the list. Oh, so. Yeah. I have the PS4 remake that came out, what, last year, I think? Yeah, and I th- is I think it's like the same thing where it's... I it's just part of zero the Switch, is it not? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it seems like they're bringing tons of Resident Evil stuff over to the Switch. Capcom seems to be a fan of the Switch, so that'll be fun to pick up and play. So this is just that band. same remake? I I yeah. think so, yeah. It's probably like hd Well, I mean, the one on PS4 was as well, I'm pretty... Wow, everyone hates the Resident Evil remake, Nick. <laughs> You're wrecked. <laughs> You're wrecked. All right. All right. Dan, what, what do you got? Um, let's see, April or early year, some of the stuff I was waiting for actually already came out, but, uh, the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy is coming out, coming to Switch, uh, in early April, if it hasn't already, I think it might be out this week or next week. So that, that is a part that I'm kind of excited about because I really like those games, especially the first three were really, really good. Are they updated at all? Like, uh, I'm not sure. I don't. I mean, they're probably upscaled, yeah, but I don't think they're anything crazy because you know there's not much to do with them to be. Unless they 3Dified all the, the first three games like they did with the later games, so who knows? That I still have only played the first one, so. Wow. I should probably just go play. You liar. Conference. You played you played uh the crossover. Oh yeah, Leighton versus Phoenix Wright. That game's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Ah. Uh, Alright. I I will give one here. Uh, I'm trying to pick one that I think no one else probably has on their list. I don't know much about this game, but it seems cool and it's coming to the Switch. It is an indie game called Katana Zero. It was on the the uh, indie, I saw the indie showcase. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like it seems like a two D side scrolling. I can't tell if it's procedurally generated levels or if it's defined levels in like a Metroid style. But it's like a super stylish action, like ninja Platform. combat game. Uh, a lot of people would make comparisons to Hotline Miami in terms of like the weird style. Yeah, that's true. So, but it's it, from the side instead of from the top. Yeah, it just seems over the top and like neon-y, cyberpunky. It's just just seems like a cool game. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Am I out? Yes, you are. All right. Um, 
again, some of these games I didn't really look up too much of, but I, like I, I, I'd see screenshots and maybe a little bit of gameplay. Um, and this year, I don't know when it's coming, but for the PS4, we have Concrete Genie. Um, Never heard of it. Yeah, this is new to me. Tell me about it. Uh, it's it's a game where you play as a kid, and to escape your bullying or bullies or whatever, you paint around the city with like graffiti and such. Um, and apparently, it's supposed to be like solving puzzles and whatever. So you probably get around the city with by painting left things to life. Right? Okay. So kind of like scribble knots, but with paint. Sort of. And in, or like, a 3D scribbling. environment. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. It, it looks really cool, so... It's one I'm looking forward to. Nice. Niku? Let's see. I kind of also, like... I, I don't like to dig too deep into games before I play them. Just because... I don't know, like, to be surprised. But, um... This is another kind of remake re-release retelling and that's Catherine full body because i never played oh, Catherine. that's on that's on my list too yeah so like i know you guys probably know a lot more about it if you've played the first one and then we were talking about this last week i think and how they're like adding another Catherine to the mix yeah there's cool another too. one mm -hmm. i only played the first one a little like for a couple hours i never actually finished it because something else again i got distracted and i forgot to go back to it that's one that i've got my special edition on pre-order mostly hey. so that leah can play through it as soon as it comes out <laughs> yeah <I've laughs> definitely seen leah play a lot of like babble's tower <laughs> <laughs> yep she <laughs> is very excited for a uh, full body that was on my list too that's one that i'm definitely looking forward to Awesome. I guess, uh, I'm next. Um, let me see. On the actual release date stuff, uh, I don't think anything else during like the early, late spring, early summer that I'm super looking forward to. So into mid midsummer, we've got Fire Emblem Three House. Uh, I've been waiting for that one forever. So that'll be nice when that finally comes out. It looks really interesting because of the like army aspect that each unit now has too. Uh, I'm kind of, I haven't really looked into it to see if there's been any news on how it plays out, but we'll have to see how that goes. Sounds good. Um, all right. We'll change up the pace a little bit. So in May, I actually plan on buying Team Sonic Racing. Oh boy. Um, which is the next I, I don't know if it's the same team that did Sega and Sonic All-Stars Racing but Sega and Sonic All-Stars Racing is a really good kart racing it game. It was done like by Sumo Digital Diddy Kong. and yeah I'm, I'm down for more Sonic Racing so it's coming out in May there's not a lot else in May that I saw that I'm really crazy about so I might pick that one up alright um, mine will be very quick. I'm looking forward to the new Pokemon that's coming out on Switch. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we all are. It it is on my list. Yes, I will be buying it. <laughs> all right, remove that gonna, sucker. Are you going to be a sword or a shield or a gun? I'm going to be uh, the shield. You know, the last couple of Pokemon games, like generations of Pokemon game, I just haven't really cared. I mean, like, it generally doesn't matter because you'll you're gonna somebody in our friend circle is gonna have the other one, you know. Yeah, I kind of just like grab whatever one's there. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Well, I don't know. If I do look into it, it's just like which legendary looks cooler. That's, and then that's gener it. Yeah, that's. I mean, I like Lunala better for Sun and Moon, so that's why I picked. Um, usually I'll just ask like Nick or someone like, Hey, what, what version are you getting? Okay. I'll get the other one. Right. And then I probably won't trade anyways. 
<laughs> well, because like, like it only matters then if you played at the same time anyway. So yeah. Uh, I guess I'll mention another one that's probably on everyone's list is the the Link's Awakening remaster. Oh yeah. Um, I never played the original as well, so this is another good opportunity to just. I think play I only I missed. I think I only ever played it once, so I don't oh. remember a whole lot of it. But I do have it somewhere. It deserves more love. It is mm, one of the best Zelda games ever. Yeah, I'm tempted to play. I have the. I think I have the like virtual console version that's on the 3ds. I'm tempted to play it and then play it again. I, I'm, I'm sure it would be a different enough experience where you could enjoy that. That and like appreciating the differences what might be fun or like seeing what yeah. they do change. Yeah. All right, Dan. Well, kind of on the same vein, uh, Cadence of Hyrule. Uh, I can't believe nobody's mentioned that one yet. The oh, Necrodancer yeah. Legend of Zelda crossover game. I've that's actually never played Crypt of the Necrodancer, so that's why it wasn't on my list. I like the idea, oh. though. It was, Crypt of the Necrodancer is really fun. I have it installed on my computer, but I kind of suck at it, so I'm hoping I'll be a little better at the Zelda one. Uh, I think it'll probably end up being a little bit easier so people can get into it. Maybe. But it'll probably also have, like any rhythm game, will have uh, super hards. True. True. All right. Um, what am I going to pick? Wow, I have such the worst short-term memory. Dan, did you already say Judgment? No. Okay, I feel like if anyone, you would have said it. Uh, so in June... Uh, Judgment, which is the next game from the Yakuza team that is like, I think kind of like a investigation, like detective story, but yeah. it says it's an action adventure game, but you know how vague those can be. Yeah. I kind of got the impression that it was like a little bit Yakuza, a little bit like LA Noir. I mean, it, According to this description, it is a legal thriller set in the Yakuza world and follows yep. a private detective as he investigates a serial murder case. So that, I mean, after finally being converted into a Yakuza fan thanks to Noah, I could not be more excited. That, that's probably one of, mm, of the games that have definite release dates. I think the Judgment is the one that I'm most looking forward to. It, and for I was worried for a little bit. It was rumored that it might not come over here because the one voice actor got into some trouble, trouble yeah. with the law, which caused it to be pulled from stores in Japan. So uh, apparently, it didn't affect anything, and it's still going to come here. So, yay! I too am looking forward to Judge Eyes. What a better name Judge Eyes is, by the way. I know, <laughs> like. How lame to rename it to Judgment. Judge Eyes is an incredible, incredible game title. So, like, what I don't understand, is it, like, the judge's eyes, or is it the act of judging, where you've been judge eyed <laughs> Like, are you asking if it's, like, a superpower? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, either, it's, like, Judge Eyes is another name for Batman's detective vision. Where in the Arkham games, you make everything go blue so that you can see clues and footprints and fingerprints. That's you turning on the judge eyes. All right. Um, most of my remaining games are actually just sequels. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. I never yeah. played, uh, was it yeah. Dark Moon or whatever it is? I never yeah. played that one either. It's not as good as the original, so... Not yeah. missing out. You'll, you'll be right. fine waiting for three. I still want to play it though. Oh, well, I'm I'm not your dad. You can play whatever you want. I will. Dad. <laughs> okay. Don't tell me what to do. I'm not going to my room. Hi, right, Nick. Your turn. <laughs> um, one of mine is the medieval remake because I never replayed. 
I never played that one either. <laughs> yeah, so that's another one where I just want to try it. Looks fun. I forgot that that one even existed. I will probably want to check that. I haven't played the first. I haven't played any medieval game, so. Yeah, that was just one where I was looking through like the lists today, and I was like, you know what? That's probably that's yeah. probably going to be fun. That will be fun. Good pick. Um, speaking of sequels, uh, one I'm looking forward to is the. I guess I'll just bundle these two together because they're kind of the same. Trails of Cold Steel One came out this month. the The remastered definitive edition, uh, for PS4, and then the second one, the remaster, comes out in like May. And finally, the third one will finally come out in I think September or uh, October, somewhere around that time, late later this year. Hmm. Are those PS4 versions drastically different from the Vita versions? Nope, they're just upscaled and better graphics, okay. better FPS. Uh, I don't. I think they added more dialogue, like voiced dialogue. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say I don't think those games needed more dialogue. <laughs> yeah, sorry. They voiced more scenes, uh, and. There was something else, like maybe a remastered soundtrack or something like that. But like mm. my save will transfer from my Vita versions to these versions. Well, that's cool. They don't do that very often. Yeah, that means they didn't change that much since they'll use the same New Game Plus. Cool. Um, all right. I'll let you guys choose. Should I steal one from Dan or should I steal one from Noah? Ooh, uh. steal one from me. Dan, all right. I'm looking forward to Fire Emblem Three Houses. I already said that. Oh, I forgot. Okay, I'm a Stanley Vanilla. All right. I forgot to mark it on my list. My bad. And so, the one from Noah I'm looking forward to is Dragon. I'm also looking forward to it. (laughs) Are you hyped for Dragon Quest Builders too? We have a weekend planned around it. I believe. That's the only reason it's on my list. I. Wow. have never played the first one but i mentioned the second one to noah and he got very excited to play a co-op which got me very excited to play a co-op and so now i'm really looking forward to dragon quest builders too it seems like it might be awesome you can do Actually, all the combat and i'll do all the building oh can we do like 80 20 of each that's fine I appreciate that you're trying to take the building away from me because you know I'd rather do the combat. Dude, no, but... I would rather do the building is the real answer here. I am selfish. <laughs> Not selfless. We're going to have to split the diff. Whatever is the most fun. But, yeah, man. I'm just I'm just pumped for some, some co-op bro-op. And that's all. Dragon Quest Builders 2 is going to be good. Uh, I think I have one on here that nobody else will have, but I'm going to save that for last. Um, and I'm going to say Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That's the one that Respawn is making. Oh, I don't know if I know about this one. Respawn is making a Star Wars game that's coming out this year? Yeah, nobody knows anything about it, like, apparently, um... They're just working on it, and they haven't canceled it. And re- it's Respawn and Star Wars. And I like good Star Wars games, and Respawn makes good games, so I'm thinking it's all going to work out. Huh. I, uh... I mean, I'm interested in anything Respawn does. Yeah, but especially cool. for me, a Star Wars game would be nice. Nerd. Sorry. Nick? Hmm. Another remaster that I'm looking forward to that I'm, I hope we can, if other people get it, probably make like a party weekend out of it, is the Crystal Chronicles remaster. Oh, man. I was hoping you were going to nope. say that. Yeah. I am. I want to play that again. So I I've, beat that game. I am I done. beat that game. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> that game's in the past and I'm wow. looking forward into the future 
<laughs> wow. Ugh. Have you ever have you ever beaten Crystal Chronicles? I actually haven't. No, me yeah, neither. I'm not because surprised. Because no one has, except for us. All right? I mean, the problem was that our group wouldn't meet up enough. That was that was our problem when I was... It's impossible to find the group. It's so hard to beat that game. I mean, it might be easier now if it's online. So mm. Talk a big game now, buddy. I can't wait to watch you scramble through it. I'll share my trophy with you. Oh, kitty. All right, cat. Oh, um, that'll be that'll be fun to watch, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna throw this one out here now that I'm sure is on all of your lists, or I hope it is. And if not, you should put it on your list. Uh, and that is Untitled Goose Game. It's That's the actual title, list. right? Yes, that is the actual title. <laughs> uh, it's not on my list. I actually don't know anything other than the name, which is an effective yeah, I mean, name. You you play uh, you play as a goose, and they give you a checklist of things to do, and you accomplish it. Most of which is annoying people. Uh, the demo at PAX, you were in a garden, and they give you the the tasks of get into the garden. Uh, have a picnic so you'd have to steal a bunch of food from the garden and put it on a little picnic blanket out by the lake uh steal the gardener's hat get the gardener wet and all these other things so you'd have to like lure him to a sprinkler and turn on the sprinkler and get get him all wet uh, it sounds like octodad i had never played octodad but I'm I'm really excited for it. I mean, I bought a shirt. I bought some goose socks when I was at PAX, and I have that goose button uh, that says no geese on my screen. So it it looks real good. That's do you you're that's too next level for me. I'm too basic. <laughs> <laughs> you sound so dedicated. That was that was a man championing a goose game. <laughs> I believe you that it'll be good. Good. Um, All right. Uh, Late summer, but uh, after the Nintendo Direct, I'm looking forward to Astral Chain, which is another character action game from Platinum. It's got kind of an anime vibe going on, like a future cop kind of vibe. And I think because the they announced that. What do you mean? I, th- I think I missed that one. Like the direct that it was it, in. It was not in the Nindies one, but it was in the like, big direct. The same one where they announced that like Mario Maker was coming to Switch. Yeah, I must have missed yeah. that one. Yeah, I'm sure you'll buy it. It's it's very much a Dan-looking game. Wow, what are you trying to say? That it has anime and the character action. <laughs> <laughs> I know who I'm talking to, all right? Um, but yeah, that one, I mean, August 30th. Okay. Platinum games are mostly day one purchases as long as they're not licensed. So I will be grabbing it. Sweet. Um, Psychonauts 2. That's all I know about it. Electric. Is that this year? Uh, It says this year. Ah, the best part about this episode is me learning all these games that I want to play are coming out this year. I don't know how I missed them. Yep. That's all I have. Nick, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm running out. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. It's on my list as well. I've got yep. it pre-ordered on Amazon. I was a backer of the Kickstarter, even though... The recent videos and demos have not gotten me super excited. I'm, it's still on my list. I was say, did you finally play the? Did you play the demo they handed out with Kickstarter stuff? I only played the very first demo. Uh, no, I, I played more, a little bit of this. The more demo. recent one, yeah. Like I didn't uh, Kickstart it because I didn't know about it until afterwards. But uh, a friend of mine did, and he didn't want to play the demo, so he just gave it to me, and I. I thought it was, other than some of the, like, audio, I thought overall it was still, if a little, maybe a little slow, but that might get better 
uh, as you progress into the game. Hmm. Like the it, lighting wasn't terrible, like it looked like it was in some of the videos and, and clips I saw. The backgrounds were like complete and not awful. So it's coming together, and hopefully will be even more together uh, by the release. It, yeah, yeah. It seemed like it was on pace to be kind of like a good game, maybe not like yeah. a crazy good game, but yeah. I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Like, they're still showing incomplete footage and stuff, so we'll see what the final product looks like. But that, that's not on my list, too. Sure. Uh, I guess I'm next again. Uh, let's see. What else did I have on here? Um, a number of mine have been eaten up. Um, oh, uh, Damon X Machina for Switch. I'm looking forward to that one. I always like me some armored core robot fighting stuff. I didn't download the demo. I'd been meaning to. I forgot, and I don't know if it's still up or not. That uh, that's the type of game that looks cool. I'm gonna like let you play it and convince me if it's good or not. <laughs> Wait for the review. Okay. Yep. Okay, I've only got a couple left on my list, which. And I'm assuming I can't count Yoshi's Crafted World because it already came out. I just yeah, haven't bought it yet. Uh, in August is when apparently Shenmue 3 is going to come out. No, you took one of my last two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only have enough for... I only have two left after this, and one of them is a big, like, nah, I guess, type game. So I'll probably leave it off. But yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for Shenmue 3. Mostly just because of the hype around it. Like, I'm actually not the world's biggest fan of Shenmue 1 and 2. I like them some, but they did not, like, blow my mind. So it's sort of like a let's see what happened with Shenmue 3 after all this time. I'm curious. Uh, the first one does not hold up very well. I can let you know that one. <laughs> Other than the forklift driving? Dude, I spent way too long... Driving that forklift. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. I mean, I've said I it was before, driving, but... Courtney came over and I drove the forklift the entire time. That's all she saw of that game. <laughs> she was over for what, like six to eight hours too? It was stupid. Uh... Oh, Is that that's... it? It's, it's, yeah, well, that's all there is in life is just driving the forklift, man. All right, this I would say this one is the one I'm most excited for, and it's Blazing Chrome. Uh, this is made by the same people who made Onikin, and apparently they made another game called Odalis or Odalis or something. Um, and it's Contra. It, it looks just like Super Contra. Um, and those guys, they know how to make a game look like it's from that age, too. Um, so if you've ever played oh, Onigen, yeah. it looks like an NES Strider type game. And, uh, Blazing Chrome looks like an SNES Contra game. Like, it's, it's looking real good. That's a good pick. Onigen is really good. That, I've never heard like... of it. Uh, I, I, I'm surprised to hear that they have a game coming out, dude. That's a, what a hype pick! I I will buy that. What's what? Uh, what's the release date? I have no idea. I think it's this month, but I'm not sure. Oh dang! Um, there was like a limited physical edition that Play Asia released for Oniken and Odalis or Odalis or whatever it is. So I have that on pre-order, and now I get to play another game by that team. Woo! Let's see. Um, oh, um, they are re-releasing Cuphead on the Switch. So I'm going to pick that up. That's good choice. That's just a good one. And hopefully that means Cuphead will finally get a physical release. Fingers crossed. What a good game. 
You got any left, Dan? Uh, yeah, I've got, uh, I'd say one major one, and then the rest are just kind of like little ones. I'll cover them like when everybody else is done. But uh, East 9, which I just learned about tonight uh, as I was looking at the list, uh, is apparently coming out this year. And um, I've played all the other ones, so I'm pumped to play the new one. The last one, East 8, was really good. So like this one should also be amazing. More, more East for Dan is always a good thing. Uh -huh. More East for Steve is a better thing. <laughs> Well, there's plenty of East left for Steve that he hasn't played yet. <laughs> Just got to add one more to the pile. Yep. Um, I think the last major one on my list is they are remaking, and I think it's twice for Bob that's doing it, Crash Team Racing. Called Crash oh, yeah, Team that's Racing coming out Nitro soon. Fueled. It's coming out in June. Uh, June, yeah. Okay. So if I didn't get in enough of my kart racing fix from Team Sonic Racing in May, I can play Crash Team Racing in June. All right. It's a good year for kart racers. Now you got any left? I'm out. Nick, I have one, and it's another re-release. <laughs> but hey, man, um, that's what this year is, maybe. Um, oh the. When we were at Distant Worlds, um, talking about Final Fantasy games, there was, well, there's two that I definitely re want to replay this year, maybe. <laughs> definitely, maybe. Um, one is Final Fantasy IX, because that's probably the one that I played like the longest ago and deserves a replay from me. But I think that, is that on the Switch already? I believe so. That's what I thought. And then the other one was Final Fantasy X. I want to get that uh, again. And the play 10 that HD, again. HD remake. The 10, 10, yep. 2. Yeah. I mean, I played, I have the PS, I played it through on PS3, and then I bought, ended up buying the PS4 one uh, when that came out later, because it was even more HD-ified than the PS3 one. Um, and I can attest that it's, like, the music was really off-putting at first, just because it's so different than the PS2 versions but you can pick uh between which version you want to listen to on the ps4 version so i'm curious which one they'll end up putting on the switch probably the ps4 version but hopefully yeah having both audio tracks would be cool yeah, yeah i'm and i'm excited i never had like the vita so i didn't get that version so i'm excited to have like a, a portable version of it right yeah i mean it's the same one the ps3 and vita versions were the same yeah, I did. Ha I did. I did get the PS3 one. I just never like went through and played through. Right. I never finished was... all the extra junk in it myself, so it's something I planned on doing eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I put a lot of time into like the original. Right. I never did like everything, but I did. I did a lot. So... You finished some sphere grids for people. No, I, I didn't do, like, that intense, but I, like, I, I got all the best weapons and everything, yeah. and summons, and... Apparently that's a lot easier, the the sphere grid thing in the newer version. is like, a re-farmable thing that gives you a ton of experience that you can just keep doing after a while. Mm, yeah, that'd be nice. But that was my last, last one. No. Yeah. I have a few minor ones then, I guess. Uh, another one that I just read about uh, is called uh, I. This uh, It's coming out on Switch, I think, um, and PS4. It's another detective game uh, like you were talking about earlier with the Yakuza one, but it's just an anime one. Um and then there's Code Vein supposed to be out this year. That's the anime Dark Souls game, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and, and the Digimon Tactics game that's coming out sometime this year. Digimon Survive is what it's called. That's a Dan game if I've ever heard one. <laughs> More like Dan Gimon, am I right? Uh -huh. What was the name of the first one you said? Gun? I. A I. The Somni oh. Somnium file. Huh. 
That? It's Seems by Spike Chunsoft. So. Oh. Hey, now. Yeah. And you're an all star. That is yeah. an incredibly difficult <laughs> name to Google. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I found it on the Wikipedia list, and I'm like, "What is this?" And oh, it's a Spike Chunsoft game. That actually sounds really interesting. So, oh they, my god, you know, there are zero escaping guys and dude. This game looks like it's gonna rule. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Dang. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> my man, it's got my back. <laughs> um. Okay, I actually have a couple more that I remembered that I'll bang out real quick. Uh, One of them is The Sinking City, which is a... Seems like it's kind of like a little bit horror game, maybe a little bit of a walking sim type game. Action, adventure, mystery, horror. Yeah, so it's, it's a Lovecraft story, so it's like Cthulhu type horror. Oh, okay. And... I think it t- takes place in, in in a city that is being flooded. So, um, and not, not a lot of like horror games come out, especially ones that aren't like really action focused. So that'll be cool. Um, and then my last one, even though I haven't played the original game, is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I'm which... in that exact position. I have had a copy of Ori and the Blind Forest on my shelf for years. I am, like, feeling guiltier by the day that I haven't played it. Should have so, put it on the list. I I almost did. It was, like, the 11th game on the list. I almost put that one on, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I haven't played and And why I'm excited for Will of the Wisps is because it seems like it'll be good, and it'll get me to play that, finally, before I play Will of the Wisps. So this will be a double or a year for me. And that's all, I think. Bayonetta 3 is not coming out this year, right? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> then that's all for me. That's all oh, I, I forgot. There was one more that I forgot about. And, uh, and that's the Kill La Kill game, which is a very low, like, yeah, it might be worth checking out. It's a fighter game. Oh. It's Kill to Kill. Yeah. All right, so... Those are some games that maybe you should look out for in 2019. I mean, 2019 seems like it's going to be a good year. A lot, a lot of a lot of good video games coming out. Honestly, a lot of video games re coming out or moving to Switch, according to Nick. True. <laughs> yeah. Nick's list was like, "Hey, you remember those games you guys played? Now I can play them on the Switch." It's going to be awesome. His life is amazing. I'm excited for you to play these games on the Switch. But do we have anything else going on? Anything you want to talk about? No. I think that is a good episode for the people. Alright. So, I haven't put out the Dan and Nick uh, interview yet. I'm probably going to put that out this weekend after this episode goes up. Um, I just wanted to space them out a little bit. And so don't email the video at gmail.com because we don't actually have that uh, email address. I thought we did, but we don't. Um, But you can contact us at uh, thebideo.com. Just go to contact us. It'll get to Nick, and we'll do stuff. So if you got suggestions or complaints or what have you, do that up. And yeah, I guess we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Wait, we should do a topic for the next couple of weeks. And I was going to say deep cuts from games that aren't super popular. I don't know how I was going to word that one. What did we talk about, Steve? Uh, It was game... Choosing some songs from game soundtracks that are either from games you think most people haven't heard or songs that are not the popular ones from those games that you like. So pick 
a handful of like deep cut songs that you like from games that you might not expect anyone to know about. And we'll share some music with everybody and uh, enjoy some cool tunes. Yeah, that sounds like the plan. I'm not sure how we're actually going to do that, but um, we'll figure it out. Yeah. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks with some of that stuff. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.